I will do a quick intro with all of these devices so everybody knows what they're watching and listening for tomorrow morning when you guys get your data back. So first thing, again, thermal imaging. You should be able to see me in there. I'm the red, orange, and yellow guy. So if you're a bridal party, that means I'm the hottest thing inside the picture. Sorry, <laughs> fellas. Um, but with that, we're looking for blue and black spots to move on their own. So those are the cold areas inside the frame. There is a blue dot bouncing around the screen. That blue dot is giving us the coldest point in the frame at that moment. So when you're watching your video, it's helping direct your eye on where to look. So again, this is a great tool. I get about five to six really solid pieces of evidence out of this per year, but if we're not recording, we won't capture the evidence. So because this doesn't require any major hearing, we're gonna go with Riley on this one. So this one's gonna go to you. Um, so you're gonna hold this horizontal all night and keep the camera on your left. So that way, you got it. Um, the red square is the start and stop. Now we're gonna do a few starts and stops because the hardware is great, software sucks. It's horrible. So um, I'll be able to splice it all together. If we record for too long, then we're going to lose the footage that we have. So I'll give you the cues for that. So, yes. Can we switch stuff? Be among your own party. Yes, that's yes. what I mean. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. So the camera... No, you're going to be facing you. Yeah. Facing. Camera yeah. faces you. You got it. There you go. Oh, the camera's on this side. I was thinking it's a phone. Look at it and you're taking a selfie. There you okay. go. But it's faced out. So we're going to be using several spirit boxes tonight. So spirit boxes are a way for us to communicate with the day. Now this is going to be a radio sweeper and it's going to sweep through all of the FM radio stations at a very fast rate. Now with that, this is normally the white noise you hear on your TV shows and your YouTube videos. I have mine slowed down on purpose. The reason why they're slowed down is because first off, you're not used to listening to white noise for two hours at a time, plus all the history I'm going to give, somebody's going to fall asleep. So the slower down method is where we can use the radio DJs and song lyrics to be able to convey messages back to us. So it's a 50-50 shot that whatever we can make out of what comes out of this guy, that we can tie it to the location of where we are, a person in history we're talking about, or even something going on with one of you. So the cool thing is, is that this one is going to record this session for us all night long. Now the person that's going to be using these, I have two of these, are going to be using an earbud in their ear. So they're going to be the only ones that can hear them in real time. You will get this recording from this one um, in particular just because it's the only one that I record so that way I'm not throwing too much at you. So with that, Miss Summer, like this one, she's like, yeah, I want that one. I'm all about it. <laughs> so you're going to have an earbud. You can control the volume up and down as much as you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Most people just have one earbud in so they can hear me too. Right. Um, and then again, you're not going to mess with the recording with the volume. You just have to undo that twisty tie and your volume is the wheel right where my finger is. You see where it's moving? There you go. Blue. Oh, okay. Kelly, you're going to get the other one. You're my talker. Mm, yes, I am. <laughs> you don't know yet. I always <laughs> give this to the talkers. Because <laughs> you guys do really well about listening in on what is actually coming through. So again, remember, you're listening for the... Like the uh, the song lyrics, the DJs, and the commercials. So disembodied voices, that stuff you guys hear on TV, that's kind of a... They're rare. Like, I do get them, but it, it's not very often. So, again, there's the, another method, which is what we're doing tonight, of uh, listening to those song lyrics and DJs. And when I say you're going to hear things that are relative to that location that we're going to be at, it's going to be very specific. So, again, your volume is right there where my finger is, and you have to undo the twist tie for your earbud. Okay. We're going to be using several different spirit boxes tonight. So, this one in particular doesn't require any hearing or earbuds or anything like that either. This one's going to give us a word from time to time in the center of the screen. Right now it says the word devil. So, I know, already, right? So, <laughs> this is a phone app. It is meant to try to scare us. There are over 9,100 terms in this database. So, it is 80% of what comes up out of this thing, we don't need. We're just going to throw it out. It's the other 5 to 20% that I can tie to the location of person, one of us, and I'll give you a backlink to be able to verify all of that. So again, whenever something is relevant, you're going to get the backlink to verify the information. The cool thing is it's going to save the list. You're going to get the entire list, whether it's relevant or not. Last night, they had over 100 terms come up. Probably one of the biggest lists I've seen yet. So I'm going to clear out tonight's list, and we are not going to have the word devil to start Miss Judy. She's like, oh, man. The next word, I don't want to see every word that pops up. I will come to you when I want to see the list to kind of see where we're at with things. 
So, and I'll show you more about that once we get to that first stop. Uh, let's see. Next. So, this next crazy camera. This one works a lot different than the thermal imaging camera, so let me kind of do a quick demo on that. You should not be able to see me in the black square. I know it's a very small little lens, but of course I put them up on YouTube, so let's turn on some lights. You should be able to see me now in a purple or pinkish hue. So basically what this guy is doing is it is emitting light that we can't see with our own eyes. So you can only see them through the camera. So the hope here is that we're going to be able to find something that we normally wouldn't be able to see with our own eyes. So again, this is a very unique style of a camera. Um, normally when I have my full groups of 10, I would use laser grids with that. But again, I don't want to, I have other things that are cooler than the laser grids, but I still want to be able to use this. So Alex, this one's going to go to you, sir. We're not recording with yours yet. So again, I will, only because those files are so large. Um, now with Riley's camera, that one I started right away so everybody knows how to watch it with all of the craziness that's going on inside the screen. Now the two of you both have cameras. People do not like to be filmed and they don't like their cars to be filmed. So if people are walking to their cars, I will say let's act casual. So you're going to casually be playing on a cell phone and then you're going to be dropping yours on the ground just like that. You got it. So. It is. It is a GoPro. It's just altered. Yeah. It's probably the same shine. This next beer box is also, it's brand new. I just got it two weeks ago. So basically what this guy's going to do is it's going to sweep through the FM and AM radio stations simultaneously, but it's going to take out the static. So it's only going to be spitting out words from time to time, and hopefully it is tangible to where we can actually make it out of what it is saying. So it's not doing anything but little tiny spit-ups here and there. So this one's going to go to you. The only thing I need you to worry about, Mr. Steve, is the mute button. Sometimes it's distracting for me, so I'm going to have you hit that mute button from time to time just to silence it. But you don't need to, you know, here it's the only button on the side. You got it. This is going to be cool. This is going to be cool. All right, Reese, have you guys seen these on TV before? These K2 EMF meters? So this is a pretty common, she's like, yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. So these are pretty common. So this is gonna measure electromagnetic fields, anything coming from cell phones, wiring, or buildings, or anything like that. Reese, like, pay that's what this is going to be able to measure. This helps me debunk things ahead of time. So again, this one is, it only goes to 25 milligal, so I'll explain more about that as we move along. But Reese, all you have to do is let me know when this guy lights up. So that way you guys kind of have a full array of a little bit of everything from your, and then Karen. Ah, look at me getting names right. Ah, it took me a minute. So, because I already know certain things about you, sir, I'm giving you the multi-tool. So you're going to be fully immersed in everything that everybody's doing. So this has got three different functions to it. This has an EMF meter in it, just like Reese's over there. But yours goes all the way to 200. It's a little bit more accurate. So anything above 2.5, I want to know what it is so I can measure it. This one does not record anything. The bottom is ambient temperature. If Riley finds something on her camera, you and I can debunk it or prove it pretty quickly with the ambient thermometer at the top. It also has a motion sensor on it. So if something gets close to the antenna that I just pulled out, it's going to go off. The closer it gets, the higher of a pitch and the different colors that are going to show up. We're going to talk more about that at the next location as well, just because, again, can be distracting from time to time. For now, focus on those two numbers. Okay. All right, guys, go have fun. Let me know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Who's carrying the bag? No, I'm kidding. I guess I'm carrying the bag. Stay with me. So that might be better for Reese, actually. <laughs> Reese, okay. please. Can I ask a question again? You can. What am I supposed to be listening for? So you're going to hear the radio chatter coming. I hear through. that. So the song lyrics, DJs, commercials, Just anything. It's very snap. Yep. So if you can make out a word or a phrase, I want to know what it is. That's basically what we're after. Okay. Now, again, it's only a 50-50 shot with that specific device. The one that Judy has, it's 20%. So, so far, the one that Steve has has been 75% accurate. So, again, that's why we have that guy. Like, that thing is amazing. I love it. But yours is at a 50-50 ratio based on, you know, the findings I've had in the past. So, again, everything you tell me might not be relevant. 
if you hear like buy it now it's probably <laughs> throw it away if you hear the word charleston we're going to throw it away because you're listening to charleston radio stations so again the word charleston is going to pop up a lot i can ask a question yeah have you gotten evidence before on these trips every single time okay is it from the stories you tell or is it from things that 80 percent of what comes up out of these mm -hmm. is coming from the stories i tell tonight Sometimes I have no idea what it means, but I still look into it anyway based on where we are or something, another location or something nearby where there might be another part of the story or a whole different story. I'll dive into a specific building. If I get a date, I'll dive into what happened in that area in a certain time era based on a certain Pretty name. Dumb. Like right it just depends on what the phrasing or terms are. So, but again, a lot of it, I just throw it away. But the, every once in a while I get that, wow, I wonder what that is. For example, Last night we had the term March 8th come up. No, May 8th, I'm sorry. So I got excited about it because it's a specific date. Mm -hmm. Based on where we were, and we're gonna talk about the pink things a lot tonight, but we are near Charles Coatsworth burial. And it turns out on May 8th, there was, oh, we also had the word meat show up on the word list last night, which we all kind of chuckled about. Like, really, we're talking about meat? Like, that was mm -hmm. a, just a weird term. Normally I would have thrown it away. But apparently during the siege of Charlestown in 1780, there was a declare of no more meat being served that was printed in the paper. Wow. And Charles Coatsworth Pinckney was the, one of the like dissectors of being able to surrender the city. And it was a pretty big deal because he was one of the prominent people that was able to do that out of the 12. Mm -hmm. So again, we were near his grave and I found that little tidbit of information that wasn't on my tour. So mm -hmm. again, if there's something extra, I'll dive wow. in. So again, as far as finding evidence, it's about like how do these things actually match up with one another. I don't know if anything ever from just and I'm just looking for what I do. We're gonna, again, you guys are all gonna have questions, so. No, no, I have a reason for asking, but I will get that to the end. Please. Like what? No, I'm gonna tell you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, let's talk about why we started here. Big John's behind me. This Wait. place is haunted. So, I know it's closed right now, but it is, this is the only night of the week on Mondays that it's actually closed, so. This is a renovation of Big John's Tavern. It was Big John's Tavern back in the 50s, as you can see by the sign. And it was owned by a football player named Big John Kennedy. He played for the 1947 New York Giants. Now, most of my spirit boxes, actually all spirit boxes are out and play tonight. So I'm always going to slow down on certain keywords. For this specific location, it's gonna be 1947 New York and Giants are keywords. And obviously anything relatable to a bar. So, he used to sit in the back of the bar and he would tell the bartender if the cadets coming over from the Citadel if they were old enough to drink or not. And one night two guys come in, they're not old enough to drink. So he has the bartender throw them out. They leave pretty angry. They come back the next night and try to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. John sees what's going on, puts his beer down, and goes over and just starts pounding these guys into the floor, just beating the heck out of them. A couple of gunshots go off. John gets grazed in the neck and the bullet lands in the wall. John gets up after being shot, goes back to the bar, tells the bartender to get him another beer, get the two guys on the floor in ambulance. Now, John's the only one that got shot in that whole fight. And also the irony of this story is that nobody died in that story. So what's haunting the place, allegedly, is that bullet hole. Even after the renovations, if the bullet hole, even if it was filled in, it means John's blood is still in this building. He is gone now, he passed away in 2012. However, people that sit in the front of this bar tend to get a little queasy, nauseous, headache very light symptoms. This is kind of a huge warning. Fingers crossed we're going to be dealing with paranormal activity tonight. The ghosts are not on the payroll. Like, I can't make them do anything. So, if anybody starts to feel any of those symptoms that I just mentioned, I need to know immediately so we can move the whole group and get that person to safety. I won't say that I haven't had to call paramedics in the past on a nice cool night like this. So, we will discuss that more as we move along. So, let's get our mind off of our own health. Right, so same building. Have you guys taken other Charleston history tours at all? Never. Nothing. Good, no. yes. Some or no. So you guys are definitely the veterans. <laughs> so every Charleston tour will tell you about our great earthquake of 1886. It's a big anomaly for us because this is South Carolina, East Coast. We're not supposed to have earthquakes. This is allegedly where the first death occurred from that earthquake. The white mantle you see in the middle of the building also wraps around the front. So a piece of that broke off, hit somebody in the back of the head, and killed them. And they say you could see his ghost in the middle of East Bay Street. Now I say apparently and allegedly a lot with that because I don't have any proof. It's just a great segue so people aren't thinking about getting sick on the tour. So, are you all ready to go ghost hunting? Yes. yes. All right, we're going to go this way. 
circle in a little bit further. Sometimes cars like to cut through here. Uh, Reese already has like a 15 to 20 dollar job, so just let me know if something pops up on the And that's why they, nope, he's good. That's why they call it ghost hunting. I need to know that stuff. I'm not going to stand still the whole time. So, welcome to the big red barn. So when I have larger groups like this, this is a great place where it's a one line of history, just so I can show you guys more about your devices. Your entire time with me should be thought of as kind of a ghost hunting 101. We are going to be leveling up as we move along. So by the end of this, you guys will be experts on the piece of device that you're holding. But this place, let's get started. This is where we hold the, have the horses for your paragraphs. So they can hear us. Uh, there is no windows, like no glass inside those windows over there. So they can hear us, which is one of the reasons why we use earbuds with the, the spear boxes. Um, but this is the same red barn that held horses that deliver milk and eggs to the residents of Charleston. That's the only one line of history that I have for you. Roughly 1860 to 1920s. Mm. So let's talk about spirit boxes. Let's get into those because there's more of those than anything else. Spirit boxes, this is not television. This is not YouTube. This is not, is somebody here? Like everybody wants to ask. Because if somebody says no, that means somebody's here. Right, Summer? Right. So, okay. <laughs> so we are not going to be asking yes or no questions all night long. You guys want a paranormal proof? It's not going to come out of a yes or a no. It's going to come out of specific details. In a space like this, I would normally have you guys start asking questions that you know the answers to. For example, if somebody's here, tell me what color the big red barn is, right? Obviously, we're going to be looking and listening for the color red because TV has a word list to looking. So I want you to keep in mind that your song lyrics and DJs and commercials, even on, on yours, uh, Mr. Steve, those are not, like, the, the word red might not be there. So the word fire truck, blood, heart, those would be acceptable answers White. to me simply because those things are specifically red. Now, well, it's not going to be shirt or shoes or anything like that because those things can change colors. But what color is the big red barn? Blood. I'm good with that. However, most of the night I'm going to require that there's at least two pieces of something going on, including a human to be earned in that reading to be able to verify what's going on. For example, let's say Judy's word list has the word art on it, and some of you have the number 40. Art and 40 don't mean anything by themselves in this location. We put them together, and we have Art Faircloth that was jersey number 40 on Big John's team. Do you guys see where I have to put all these clues together to see what's actually happening? So we're going to be dealing with people from the 1700s and 1800s tonight. A lot of these people have the same name, Charles's and George's, Eliza's. Like, we need to know who the heck we're talking to. So the secondary clues are going to help us verify who these people actually are. So, and you don't have to hold that thing up. That's what I was going to ask you. Am I pointing it in any direction? No. I, the first time I brought it out, um, the gentleman actually used it like it was a, a cell phone. Like he walked oh. around like he was on a business call all night long. It's hysterical. Yeah, I know, right? Um, so, spirit boxes, that's basically how we're going to be using your devices throughout the night. In each location, I'll give you impromptu questions that you can use, but if you go rogue, just try to stay away from yes or no questions. And of course, we always try to stick to things that we can actually prove. So it's not going to be like, how, how did you feel about your marriage? Like, we can't prove this. We need specific dates, names, locations, those kind of things. So cameras, let's talk about those for a moment. So um, with your camera, you're going to try to do two things. You're going to try to keep a person in view just because we're going to be warm. So it's easier to see the colors as you know you have somebody in view because it gives us a big array of colors. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is try to keep the sky out. So with that, that's mm -hmm. because the blue dot is going to go to the sky every time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's going to be impossible, so just do your best. Mm -hmm. With your camera, you're basically, so go ahead and point that camera at me for a second. I'm not looking for things inside the purple circle because we already know that I reflect light. Right? So I'm looking for things that normally wouldn't reflect light to our human vision. So I'm actually looking for things in the darkness, probably over here or up here. No, keep your camera still. So see where the, the dark spots are in the camera? I'm looking for things to come, basically come out of those areas of things that I can't identify. Now also you have two lights working for you. 
you have a short range light working for you so if somebody gets too close and it starts to bleach out you can turn off the short range and the long range is still working for you so that way you can still see my hand is somewhat purple and then you can also like at your discretion turn it on and off um, so also when we want to start recording it's this orange button up here at the top so we don't want to start recording yet that one yeah um, we're going to start recording after I give you the full history of the next location, so that way we actually have some decent footage. Um, I think everybody's got the gist of their devices, so Aaron, I'll have to work with you on that REM pod, but I want to get us moving along for the next portion instead of talking about football players and ponies. Mm -hmm. So, has anybody heard anything, or do we have any words coming up, Miss Judy? Have you heard it, seen anything? Yeah, it said sandwich for such a long time. Sandwich? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to throw that one away. Um, so when you want to take a look at the list, you hit this little white box next to it, and it'll give you everything you've had so far. And you'll be able to scroll through. Yeah, that lot. So normally I'll just kind of like transfer the shoulder. Yeah, exactly. So is that what he's looking for? Yeah, it's for it to keep going up. Okay, then you just hit that circle. Like that. Like yellow. Yeah, the yellow and right. orange. I say we go deep dive into much longer ago. So when is he supposed to mention okay. something to him? Every time, it, like I'm already keeping an eye on it. I already have it keeps going on yellow. I see that. Yeah, a couple of seconds ago it turned to orange and then red. Oh, you went up to red already? Oh, I think it's red. Yeah, the red is the very highest point. Oh, then it was orange. Oh, no, it's, a, it's blinking to red. Okay. There was a blink to red. Right there. Mm -hmm. had red, any? red, we had double ads. I see that. Um, We got red. So I will tell you that Big John's did have a fire in 2014. Um, so we'll see if something else pops okay. up with that. And I'll be looking basically for the number 14. Turn on the red. Yep. Plant. There we go. All right. Let's go uh, deep dive into history versus ponies and football players. We're going to answer. Yes. I'm the five different I'm looking for that goes up. Yes. It's on the dot? Yeah. <laughs> but and then I thought I'm like, wait. Me. My heart. No. That will keep up your like. <laughs> yeah, that's the very first thing. We could have used this in the castle. That'd be so cool. That'd be really cool. Especially when Mark went up on the top. That's what I'm saying. At least we know for next time. Next time I would definitely do a lot of things differently. I didn't even think about doing any of this. I know, but... Yeah. Did you smell flowers? No. I think it's getting into her. <laughs> Someone needs to stay with boots. I'm aware of that. Hurt? He's doing fine, Riley. We actually don't move very far. So you're already getting 20 to 25 milligals on yours. Aaron, any readings? 0.2s. Okay. We got lots of one reds. Oh, we got two reds. So he's already Matt, maxing stop. out, which is good. So I'll take note of that as soon as we're done with the history here. So, welcome to another Thank beautiful site of Charleston. <laughs> it's a parking lot. So, what was this space used to, what did it used to be? This was where the Charles and Eliza Pinckney family actually had their mansion. So, their mansion actually sat in the front of this lot. Eliza's garden was lined up with five foot restaurant and came all the way across. And we are standing where the servant and slave quarter were for the home. So, spirit boxes, I will not be giving you questions here like what color was George Washington's white horse. You will get the answers from your spirit boxes. So, I do withhold information purposely so that way you actually have a genuine experience. So, hopefully, this will answer a lot of Kelly's questions that I think are coming towards the end. So, um, with that said, let's kind of get into this. Eliza and Charles had a son named Charles, they had a nephew named Charles. That's three different Charleses. Now you can see why I need those extra clues. The son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. It's a big deal to us, but all of you are on vacation. And nobody wants to talk about politics like any less than I do. So let's let's move on. Eliza uh -huh. married Charles at a young age according to the case standards. I bring this up because if you're asking her how old she was when she got married, do not expect numbers like 12 and 14. It's according to today's standards. I also bring this up because Charles was over double her age when they married. 
so there was a pretty large age gap between the two of them. So she married him because her father over in England thought he was dying, and he wanted to see all of his children one last time. He, well, I didn't believe he was dying right away, so she got married and stayed put. This is 1744. There's no such thing as marrying for a green card or citizenship. We're not even a country yet. So again, she did marry Charles out of love. So dad gets better. She was right, so he didn't die right away. Instead, Dad from England starts sending her gifts from England to this base. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. Indigo is a plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue jeans blue. You are wearing it right now, so that's how we still use it. Now, when she got this, she didn't know what to do with it. So she had to learn from her slaves how to keep it cultivated because it's obviously not hot here all the time. So once she figured it out, she moved it to another plantation that their family had, calls her father and says, I need some contacts because the rice plantations here in Charleston are going downhill. We can make a killing with this indigo. So now we have an international businesswoman during colonial times, something absolutely unheard of. So that's Eliza's business. Let's get into the weird stuff, because that's why you all are here. So Eliza was the second wife named Eliza from Charles back to back, really smart and really stupid, depending on how you look at it. So this Eliza, or they both Elizas, actually have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. So that's the only piece I'm going to tell you about that. If you want to find out which Eliza we're dealing with, hopefully she'll tell you her maiden name. The mansion's not here anymore. You can ask what happened to it, and then what year did that tragedy occur? Yes, I'm giving you a clue that it's a tragedy. So, uh, Eliza's children, I told you there's at least one. There are more. Here's the thing, you can ask how many and what their names were, but that's about it. Leave it alone. There is a tragedy among those children, but if we poke the bear too much, all activity will stop, including recent uh, EMF readings that we already have. Like, it'll go down to zero, and we won't get anything the rest of the night. I've seen it dozens of times. Just please don't poke the bear and ruin the tour for everybody else. Um, let's see. Eliza's death, that's where she's open. You can ask her how old she was when she died. You can ask her where she died from, where is she buried, and what U.S. president was a pallbearer at her funeral. Like, these are all non-yes or no questions, very specific things. If you go rogue and ask your own questions, keep in mind, we have plenty of spirit boxes where your questions answer can go to another spirit box, my audio, or the audio on Riley's camera, because it is recording regular audio as well. So, I've seen it pretty much on a weekly basis, where somebody asks a question, but the answer goes to somebody else's spirit box. It happens all the time. So just kind of keep that in mind. So I'm trying to think of how many actually have. So we have one, uh, two, three, four spirit boxes total. Is that what I'm Yes. So four spirit boxes total. So again, just kind of keep that in mind. Everybody's pretty much got one within their group. I'm sorry, this is Right? Oh yeah, this one. Sorry. I have six total. So I can't like, remember which one you're out. Um, so go ahead and unmute yours, Mr. Steve. So go ahead and hit that button on the right hand side. Just hit it and I'll hold it for you. Yeah, just, just tap it once. Um, so we are going to spread out in here. Keep in mind, we do have vehicles here, so kind of be mindful of the two cars we have. We don't go near vehicles. We don't go in front of them or you know around them too closely. And we're lucky tonight because it's Monday. There are not many cars in here, so we have a lot of space we can actually work with. Um, we are going to spend about 10 minutes in here based on what everybody's hearing, and I'll be bouncing around all of you, writing down notes, and then I'll regroup us to get you the answers to the questions that were not answered through spirit boxes. So again, um, Alex, was it? Yeah. Right, perfect. So go ahead and you can start your recording now. So just hold that button down until it starts flashing. You've got to hold it down pretty pretty stiff. Little. There you go, perfect. All right, so i got to work with Aaron for a few minutes, but basically you guys should be following Reese. Um, and where's the other one? Oh, i got to work with Aaron. So you guys should basically be following Reese because he knows where all the hot spots are right now. So I start recording. Okay. This button. What was her name again?
how old were you when you died, Eliza? Did you hear that? What? What? How many kids did you have, Eliza? And I forgot to bring um, it. I yeah, it's been I, destroyed. Yeah, yeah, so I wish I had thought to bring it. It doesn't screw it all. It was bright red from the longest time. Just non-stop red. But that's why we didn't move. Like, okay. so, like, right in this spot, it was like bright red. Right across. I was talking about Mark. He was running downstairs. Oh, we were yeah. Were you a little uh, yeah, spooked yeah. yourself? Yeah. Were you a little nervous? Yeah. He was, it's such a great story. It was just porous. It's great. Came down pale, very pale. Yeah. Very cool. And usually I would be like, you know, the one to do that, and I just sat in the room. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that close. Yeah. I believe in those. Yeah. I believe in the afterlife. I. 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 I believe in reincarnation. Yeah. I. I. You know, that's the whole thing about faith, right? You know. Yeah. So, yeah, I just I don't know, I don't know, I get there, but, so, I mean, I certainly again, don't have this to leave, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But she's definitely not stating that you were in the room, because again, just put it in there. But I'd like to be there.
all those videos together so that way you guys can watch it on YouTube okay. so you can watch it on your TV. Okay, this would be very interesting to have the cast on the video. You do believe. Again, one of the major reasons why I'm here. Do you have any, I'm sure you have some kind of proof for yourself for that, um, but have you ever had like a past life reading? Isn't that 
Let's head over to this wall and let's get you guys some answers and kind of piece some of this together. You want me to put the corner? Yeah, let's let's cut both videos. So hit your, your red square. Race. Go ahead and hit the mute button. Pull out your thing. Pull out your thing. Put it back on. Headphones on the other ones. Okay. Is it on? Yes, please. How much talking do you? You're fine. He told us after the third turn to turn it on. Charlestown Wall used to be. Charleston used to be called Charlestown, the walled city. This is one of the first streets that we ever had in Charleston, which is why I bring you down here. People used to live here, little tiny houses. I have the full list of residents of every person that's ever lived down here. The names I commonly get down here are Benjamin and John. Now, it sounds like very common names, but when I say people live down here, there's only five to six people at a time. I think Benjamin and John that both lived here in 1801 every six to seven weeks. So here's kind of the theory behind that. You're standing on Belgian blocks. Belgian blocks are made straight from granite. If you know anything about the paranormal stuff at all, you've heard the term limestone. Limestone is said to either stir things up or hang on to the consciousness of memories. That's because it comes straight from the earth. So does granite. These granite bricks have been here since 1735. How many memories are they actually hanging on to? So, this is called the Stone Tape Theory. And it's basically like watching a movie on loop. I feel like that every six to seven weeks, I'm just catching those two names, and it's back on the loop again. So again, Benjamin and John are two common names. Every once in a while, I get a third name. It's Jane. It's a third person out of 1801's roster. I don't find it coincidental that it's on a loop like that, and it's the same three names over and over and over. So, and the other interesting thing is that John's last name was Johnson. So if we're ever confused about which John it was, we do get Johnson as well. Um, John Johnson, that was his name. So they did do an archeological dig underneath these bricks and were able to classify these people as lower class. It makes sense because on the other side of East Bay Street was where the other side of the wall would have been. The smell of low tide would be coming through here quite often. The rich of Charleston are not gonna put up with that been down to the battery, you've seen the houses are skinny and go long back. There's two reasons for that. First reason is because we have piazzas. So there's basically a, a, a door on the front porch that stops the smell of low tide from coming in. They would open up their second story windows. The cool air would come in through the second story window and drop to actually cool off the house because heat rises. So again, it was a way of air conditioning, but it was also, if you're skinny in the front, you were taxed on your house based on how much street side you took. So the skinnier you are, the less taxes you have. 
Now, we just came from the Pinckney Mansion site where the house was broad against East Bay Street. They had money. They had Eliza's Indigo money, and they were obviously politicians. It was bragging rights to be able to show off their house because they can pay the taxes of whatever the city's going to throw at them. Not to mention, they're outside the city walls, so it was probably even less out there. So, before people lived here, the Freemasons had a Masonic Lodge here, which is why they call it Lodge Alley. So, the term Freemason does show up here quite often. I even had the term Illuminati from time to time. So, I chuckle every time I hear it, because first off, why am I hearing the term Illuminati on a radio station? Who's talking about that on the radio? Um, and second off, why am I only hearing it in this space? So, I have to question that every time. I have to look at the timestamp to make sure it matches up. So, again, very interesting space. I love to bring you guys here, but you have to see some cobblestone because you're in Charleston. But again, one of the very first streets we ever had, 1735. Um, there's a lot going on here. So, we're literally right on the edge of where I'm allowed to take you. There's quite a lot of restrictions and tours. So, we're going to be cutting through a neighbor when they got caught. So, I actually got booted out of it, but I still get a lot of stirred up things going on just outside of it. Not to mention, other tours always go to their halfway mark if we're allowed, allowed to go. And I think I mentioned that we're allowed to go to 20 people, so those tours normally max out at 20 people. And it's not fair for 10 people on my tour to try to investigate around 20 to 40 people in one small space. Um, not to mention, we're going to be working around that. So even outside of it, we still get a ton of turns and a ton of, a little bit of footage from time to time will come up on the cameras uh, that they're going to shoot the filming you know, down the alley where people are going to be across the street from it. Um, so that's an interesting space as well. Have we heard anything or seen anything on your word list since we got here? Yes, sir. Imagine if there's like there's like many there's a ghost sitting all the way down there, just like they're like chuckling to himself. And that's usually so what we're looking for. <laughs> no, all the way down there, but we can't go. I have a question. Maybe just yes. waiting. You said limestone and granite. Hmm. Does that limestone and granite have anything to do why they make headstones in limestone and granite? Is there any connection there? I don't know. Okay. I've never put the two of them together. I, just, I mean, you mentioned, I was just thinking, I wonder if that has any connection from, you know, years past all the way that, you know. I wonder why. I'll dive into it. I'll see what I can just curious. Out. Yeah, it came with I got weird resources. <laughs> I'll find something. But yeah, very good question. All right, so let's go through the rest of this alley and see, uh, obviously, if we capture any summer, you got nothing. I thought you were going to be all over that. Yeah, There's nothing. Okay. Who has a recordable one? Who has a little red tag on their little, uh, the wrist strap? Okay, so some of you have the same. So, you did? Yeah. So hers is recording, so that's recording I'm going to be going over in the morning. So we'll see how much you missed. Because yeah, even if it's not relevant. See how much you missed. Okay, let me know. <laughs> I go through this for a living. Exactly, you know, you yeah. know. Exactly. So even if it's not relevant, I still put it in the list. If it's a weird phrase from a radio station, I'm still putting it in there. It might be relevant to what I'm doing, I don't know. But if it is relevant to our story, obviously I'll give it to you. Right. So, what occupies this building now? Um, this side is actually part of Magnolia's restaurant. Um, so this would probably be like the back kitchen area. And then as we go past that wall, it is considered residential. So there's a house right there on the left. Yep. It's a very cool building. Yeah, it just looks very old when you look up. Mm -hmm.
that's just weird because we have that warehouse across the street. Yeah, that's right. great. The alley behind me is called Philadelphia Alley. It used to be called Duelers Alley because this is where the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. So every ghost tour tells the same story, but you guys are ghost hunting, so hopefully you're going to get the evidence of the actual duel that actually occurred there. We all tell the same story, so let's get this party started. A doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. His name is Joseph Brown Black. He did have the, word, the name Brown show up, or the word Brown, earlier. We're a little far away for it to be relevant. Um, but Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd, he comes down here because he has a fiance, Amanda, that he's supposed to be getting married to. Obviously, she's a fiance. But she just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She has an attorney helping her out with the money. And he thinks that the doctor is just after her cash. To prove that the doctor is not after her money, he moved to Charleston. So as he's coming into town, the coachman that brought him in set him up to be robbed and killed. So it wasn't a very good start to his stay in Charleston. Somebody walking by, his name is Ralph Isaacs. Now I'm gonna stop on Ralph for a second just because you are ghost hunting, which means initials Ralph has the same initials as to where the doctor came from. Rhode Island, Ralph Isaacs. R-I will show up here. Even if it's just an R, I still need to know who it belongs to, so I always wait for that secondary clue. So Ralph says, man, you don't wanna stay here. There, he's got a gunman inside that's gonna to try to kill you and take all your money. So he says, I got some friends at 59 Church Street where you can stay with some friends of mine and rent a room from them. He takes them up on the offer and the two become friends. And the doctor's practice begins to take off. He's making his own money now. Amanda's moving down the He's whistling all the time, which means he becomes known as the whistling doctor. Every haunted city you will ever go to has a cliche whistling. Ours just happens to be a doctor. So. With that said, they go see plays together, but they cannot sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. That's just a hierarchy. He gets better seats. So they talk about these plays on the way home. One night they go see William III from Shakespeare. On the way home, they're talking about the new actors. The doctor thought she was fantastic. Ralph, not so much. They start arguing. Then it turns even uglier when Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance back home in Rhode Island. They go their separate ways after screaming at each other. Ralph is from here. He has friends at the newspaper. He puts an article or an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. The doctor sees the ad and rebuttals with, let's go to Dueler's Alley. We're going to settle this. Yes, that is one tour, everybody, just so you all know. <laughs> I just seen Riley's eyes go, wow. Um, but anyway, um, so we're going down to Dueler's Alley, right? So somebody's going to die. They come down and they take the point. Says, they turn, they sh the doctor points his gun in the air, and he shoots. He did not. I want to kill us friends. Have the courage and bravery to show up to the fight, which is often what happened at a duel. Somebody didn't always die. However, Ralph still has his one shot and his flintlock, and he puts it in the kneecap. Sorry, Aaron, you just happened to be in front of me. So he puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. So the doctor didn't die either. He drops to the ground, and his friends pick him up, carry him home to 59 Church Street, and he dies 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. You have to remember, he's a doctor. He probably tried to bleed it out himself. So, they say as you walk through the alley, you can hear the whistles from the doctor. I used to take my toys down here. Keep in mind, if you're going to go down there and turn on your voice recorders from your phone to listen to it later, every local knows the story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or on the other side of Queen Street is going to throw a whistle down the alley. So, again, there, it's not always going to be easily debunkable of what's actually going on there. Um, I do it every single night on my way back to my garage. My garage is right there. We're going to end up at this corner up here. So I pass the alley every single night. Um, and if my daughter's on the tour, we race to see who's going to throw the whistle first. Um, we especially do it if there's other tours down here. So let's uh, tell you why I actually uh, picked out of here. Well, that's the fun thing. It's actually relevant, believe it or not. So this alley didn't come all the way through all the time. It didn't go from street to street. It was actually cut off which means the bricks on the other side are older. Those bricks are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child and fingerprint swipes in those bricks. Now, I used to show them off to kind of show how far we've come as a country and in Charleston, you know, we're in the South, um, and it is outside of a gentleman's dining room window. I wasn't really happy with everybody stopping to use an EMF meter or a spirit box. I treat that brick the same way I do a gravesite. That kid is not staring at that brick in the afterlife. It was simply like, take a picture, let's move on, guys. I mean, I got a full group of 10. Well, he wasn't real happy on November 26, 2020, of me coming down there every single night. 
So November 27th was Thanksgiving. I did not have a tour. I got a phone call on the 28th from the tourism office to reroute my tour or only go down halfway, which is the limit. So I decided I'm going to reroute the tour, just like I told you, so that way we're not interrupting another one. Up there are pirate stories. I'm a vampire guy. I don't want to talk about pirates. So I told my team we're going to wing it and see what happens. I go up there, I tell what I know about Anne Bonnie, the female pirate that said the haunt the powder magazine. And we get up there and somebody hears the number 300. I don't know what it means. Somebody hears the name Anne. I'm like, okay, now we've got something going on. The next morning I'm going through the data. We were there on November 28th, 2020. Anne Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th, 1720. The exact 300 year anniversary of her trial. So now I take my teams out there every single night. And it is a hit or miss, I won't lie. It's either you get a lot or you get nothing. I hate to end the tour that way, but it's exciting when we have a lot. So we'll kind of see what happens at our last stop. But that's one of the reasons why I keep going back there. And it is a kick-ass story, by the way. I had to read so many books on pirates, you don't even know. Uh, and again, pirates are not my thing. I'm all about the vampires. So um, have we heard or seen anything, Judy, first? Okay. Okay. Kelly, Summer, anything out of yours? Nothing? You heard R? Okay. I know. It is difficult. That's why we record the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and if you, I haven't heard any noises come out of yours, Steve. Oh, I told you could turn on when you got here. I don't know. I got it down here. Phone. Okay. And it looks like it's dead. So I'm going to have did. to swap your battery once we get to the next stop. So um, we're going to continue on to but the it next. it was filming. <laughs> yeah, it was. So hopefully it saved it. Um, go ahead and stop your video so we'll be good. Okay. Once we get up to that next stop. For that gate in the middle is if there was a loser to the duel, meaning a dead guy, instead of, because remember, the alley didn't go all the way through. So instead of carrying the body all the way down the King Street and down around to get to the cemetery behind me, this was a shortcut to get over to the cemetery so that way they could go celebrate the cemetery. Again, not many other stories to tell you about because it's one of these weird little tidbits. I don't even remember where I heard. I learned that from them. I guess you can say that now. I'm going to talk about the death gate. But I am going to have you guys have a seat right here. Um, it looks like the cemetery is going to try to get up to the church. And the cemetery. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Perfect to turn around. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're good. You want to change the battery? Oh, yeah, that's right. I have one in my pocket. Thank you for letting me do this. Well, I'm glad to sit down. You guys are going to show me every once in a while. Reese, really, dude? Don't touch those. Okay, put it on. Maybe it goes both like right over the gate. We don't know. I just told you not to touch it. You gonna take it? Take it? No. And then I'm gonna stand here for a second. No, he wants you to sit down. And what church is this? This is St. Philip's. You're doing pretty good. Like this thing hasn't locked up on us once no. yet tonight, which is awesome. So 17. 17. What was the other one? Force her out. First route. Interesting. Like 17 for some reason. I don't know why. I'm gonna write that one down. <laughs> yes, that's actually relevant here. Um, just what did you say? Dig. Dig? Oh. Um, what was the first thing you said? Patricia. <laughs> I'm going to slide us down a little bit closer to this tree, just so we're not interrupting them. Because they're telling a totally different history. There you go. Perfect. Right there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So, um... For some odd reason, 17 is sticking out. I just can't figure out what the number is. So I will find out what that 17 is. Um, I do like dig. Like that is definite um, relative to one of the things that I tell here. But I am going to go to my normal go-to things. So first off, I already told you about Philadelphia Alley. The reason all of the ghost tours stop up at this particular church, I'd like to point out a few things first. There's two different sides to this cemetery. There's an eastern side and a western side. So if you're from Charleston, you get buried on this side. So Charles Pinkman, Eliza's husband, is buried on this side. I have Eliza. Eliza keeps showing up around this corner, okay, yeah. which is weird, because normally we don't get anything relatable to Eliza specifically unless we're at the home. So the past three nights, it's been over here. Again, husband is buried right over there. I'm going to wait to see if something else, not to mention, yes. okay, obviously, it's from me directly, but I want something else to verify that. Um, 
Where's your pop? And I looked up their wedding date last night because we had another number come up. And I was like, I wonder if that's the wedding date. And it wasn't. And the 17 is not it either. But anyway, if you're from here, you get paired on this side. But if you're not from here, you go to the other side. Your seventh vice president, John Calhoun, is buried on the other side. They thought he was from here because he lived here for so long. But it turns out he's not. They moved his sarcophagus several times across the street trying to figure out where the hell he was supposed to go. It turns out he's not from here. He goes over there. Now, the western side is open to the public, obviously, because there's a vice president over there, um, and you can see that during the daytime, like at nighttime, it is on lockdown. So, they're all up there telling their big finale of their tour, like every ghost tour stops there but me. I still tell the story, just because that way you're not like, why is he not taking us up to the cemetery? It's their big show and tell. They have something to show you. So, they're looking at a sign. The sign reads, there's no ghost here, but the Holy Ghost. There's a reason. 1888, a young lady dies by the name of Sue Howard Hardy. Now, Sue Howard Hardy's initials, if you were paying attention when we were talking about Rhode Island and Ralph, SHH. Cheesy, corny, but I've heard it and I've seen it for myself. So I wouldn't even bring it up if I haven't. But anyway, she dies six days after her stillborn child. Very sad, abrupt story. However, in 1987, a local photographer is taking pictures of all of our beautiful cemeteries and he captures a full apparition in a picture. It's 1987. He doesn't have the tech that we have now. He sends it to Kodak to try to get it debunked. So, I don't, I'm not gonna go into the logistics of Kodak right now um, for the younger groups. Um, but at that same time, Kodak doesn't know what to do with this picture either. So for guys like me, this picture is gold. They're all showing you the picture. I'm also gonna show you the picture, but I'm gonna give you the forewarning. To females, this picture is cursed. Do not touch the tablet as I go down the line. The curse is basically you're going to get the same symptoms, even handling it in a digital format, like what we talked about at Big John's. The headache, the nausea, the dizziness, those kind of things. Pregnant females, probably not going to have a good pregnancy based on the gist of the story. I'm not going to be the guy where somebody had a great vacation and nine months later I cursed their family. So just please don't touch the tablet <laughs> as I kind of go down. Again, it's a very cool picture because it's, it's obvious what it actually is. But again, and why should we not touch the tablet? He just said that means... So, here's the photo. I'm gonna go right down the line so everybody can see it. So there's the full picture. Those are her shoulders, the top of her head, and then the baby basket next to her. And yes, that is Sue's grave. So, so full picture. The apparition is right here. There's her shoulders. She's like she's praying over her own grave. And then the baby basket next to her. mindset going on pirates. Do we have any other words coming up? Because I like the word dig. I want to get into that. And what's the deal over there? We're going over there. Gotta hold your horses. <laughs> How do you turn this around? Can you start it? It's right here in the front. Oh, there you go. Do you want that spot? Hmm? Do you want that spot? No, what? Can you better than you do that? How do you turn this up? Wow. That was a brand new battery. They're all run on individual batteries. This was brand new. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. There's not much of it left. That's weird. Like, I... You want to see the purple. Okay. It's probably coming from the, the front, the ones next to the lens. Do you ever do anything near the slave market to get any... Have you ever, on your personal side? Um, I have actually toured through there. Um, I didn't get a whole lot while I was there. Doesn't mean right. that nothing's going on there. Um, but you personally have never gotten anything. Now, when you're talking about the slave market, which which location are you talking about? Like where we passed? Oh, this actual slave market. Um, and, it, and again, that is the place I toured through. Um, again, didn't really capture anything much out of it. And again, it's one of those spaces where they're probably not hanging out there because of what it is. Not to mention, if they well, were yeah. sold, they probably had a home. 
Um, so they might be hanging around wherever they were sold to, even if they did not have a happy master. Mm -hmm. um, so again, the mart itself, not much, I'll be honest. I mean, it's an old building, don't get me wrong. It, it should have something going on. And, it, and Again, just could have been the time frame that I was there. You know, because I do go in the, in the afternoons because ghosts don't care what time it is. No. So, um, but when I tour these places, I go to museums just like you guys do. You know, I just have everything running on me. I watch and listen to it later. I just see what pops up. I'm not walking around saying, hey, Eliza, you know, <laughs> when I'm in the middle of a museum, you know, I'm, I have everything recording in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, the slave mark, not much there. I had another question. Can't find it, though. Hold on. I'll get back to you. Okay. I'll be here all night. So, oh. that's the burning gas lamp off in the distance down this way? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that is the pirate house. The pirate house, somebody lives there. There's a big anchor on the front of it, so when you guys are walking around town, you can't miss it. And when I say somebody lives there, do not go in his backyard either looking for ghosts. He also gets angry, like the man on Philadelphia Alley. Don't ask me how I know. Um, and I poke my head around town all over the place. So, that's where Blackbeard and, well, Blackbeard's men came off their ships had a place to stay, met with a few ladies, and they dug a tunnel underneath the pirate house going one block away to Dock Street Theater. And Dock Street Theater at the time was called Planters Hotel. It was a whorehouse, a playhouse, and a hotel. Now, obvious reasons, we'll keep it PG-13, the playhouse or the whorehouse was obviously an attraction, but the playhouse was one of the main reasons why they went there. Pirates were your first stagehands. They would actually go back there to work in between bartering with the locals. So there is a rumor that that, that tunnel went all the way out to White Point Garden. To, it was kind of a secret passage for them to get into town, but that's gonna be like a two mile trek. That's more than unlikely than it is likely. Um, so again, it's a very interesting space, but I'd like to get your mindset on pirates before we deep dive across the street. But I wanna point out one last pirate before we move across the street and answer Covet's question. So. Across the street at the other cemetery, there's a sarcophagus close enough to the sidewalk that you can actually touch. It's a captor of pirates. His name was William Rett. He caught gentleman pirate Steed Bonnet. Steed Bonnet... Steed Bonnet was called a gentleman pirate because he was a joke. Like, he, he bought his way to piracy, so he's, he's not a real pirate. He wore wigs on his pirate ships. Uh, Blackbeard was training him like first mate and kept him aboard longer than he should have been because it kept his men in good like high spirits because they all made fun of him. But anyway, once Steve had his Stop. own ship, he got caught by William Rett and then William Rett turned him over to Chief Justice Nicholas Trot. Trot decides he's going to hang all of the crew on White Point Garden to warn off other pirates to not come here. You will be hung. So. When you go down to White Point Garden, you'll see all the little plaques all over that tell you about Chief Justice Nicholas Trot and obviously anything about Steve Bonnet. So, did you find what your other question was before we move on? These are things I just took snapshots of stuff. So, that's probably from a tour that has... Is it, I mean, that particular graveyard, have you ever experienced anything from that? What's your thing? Teacher, Grace, Sean. Where did you have teacher? I had teacher when you were sitting on the edge there. And, uh, trouble, Sean. I'm waiting for something else to pop up around teacher. That's here. It's a totally vague, but you got something. Basis. So this is our last stop. We're going to be deep diving into like what we did at the Pinkney Mansion, um, only I am not going to be giving you a whole lot of questions here like what I gave you over there. You'll, you'll know where we're at with how to use your devices by the time I give you the history. So first things first is we're going to be looking at the little building over there with the crosses on it. First off, those are not crosses. Those are earthquake bolts. The gist behind those is that they're turnbuckles. If we have another earthquake like what we did in 1886, you can turn those turnbuckles and it'll straighten the building back up. It's a great idea. It just doesn't work. So, the reason I bring it up is because these are the first set of earthquake bolts that we put in in Charleston. 
So the reason being is because this is the oldest government building in South Carolina. This is the gunpowder magazine. It served in seven different wars and was finished in 1713. Now, we talked about the Charlestown walls earlier. That parking garage across the street, that's where the Charlestown walls actually stood. So it went up Cumberland Street, just past the powder magazine, and started going south towards the battery behind me. So it was locked into the corner on purpose. If it gets attacked from a Revolutionary War ship or a pirate ship from three blocks away from the water, it's going to have a hard time getting through the 32-inch thick walls. But let's say that it does, and it blows up the gunpowder. There's sand in the roof that was put there during its construction to blow up with the gunpowder and then fall to put out the fire of the explosion. That's another great idea, but doesn't work. So the sand is still there because sand does not disintegrate. So there is sand underneath those, those shingles up there from early 1700s. So I bring all of this up because this particular building is kind of like a, uh, if we're using a toy to try to track a child boat, we're here because this is a familiar place to hand on. So hand on it is, we're going to get into the story, but again, using just a familiar location, this is why it's kind of a hit or miss. You're either going to have a lot or nothing at all. So let's get into the story. During the middle of this building's construction is where the story begins. Kind of follow me, there are a lot of twists. 1708. Young Anne Cormac moves here from Ireland with her father and his mistress. The mistress is her mother. Are you guys with me so far? Okay. The three of them are getting away from his wife. Wow, no looks of shock. Okay. <laughs> like, I just want to know how angry that, that wife was that they had to leave Ireland in 1708 um, to come here. They land in Georgetown, just north of here. Dad buys a plantation. Mom dies pretty quickly. So that means he has to send young Anne down here to Charlestown to be able to keep things going. She's selling anything from the plantation. Now, back home in Ireland, Anne was kind of a badass. They say she actually killed one of her servants when she was only seven or nine years old with a knife to the belly. Like, she's kind of hardcore. So, with that being said, we're going to fast forward. 1713, the building's done. 1715, pirates are coming through town. Anne is stoked. So she falls in love pretty quickly. This guy's name is James Bonney. Dad doesn't approve because he's a filthy pirate. I'm not going to approve either. They run away to Jamaica. They get married. Anne Cormac becomes Anne Bonnie, your most famous female pirate of the Golden Age. Now, when they get down there, this is not Captain Jack Sparrow that they were hoping that she was hoping for. This guy is a privateer, which basically means he's a spy for the British. He's a coward. So she falls in love again. Guy number two. I'm going to keep track. There's a couple of them. Guy number two turns out to be John Rackham, aka Calico Jack. We're going to call him Jack through the rest of the night. That was very weird. Um, just saying, that was like a weird thing I've heard come out of there. So Jack has his own ship, and Anne wants to be part of it. You can't put a girl on a pirate ship because girls curse pirate crews. So, I don't know what's with females and my curses on my tour, but they just happen to show up. But he makes a deal with her. If you dress like the crew and, you know, hide your gender, you can be a female in my quarters. So, he's the captain. That's the way it's going to go. She's okay with this. Dad used to cross-dress her as a boy back home in Ireland to keep her away from his wife. So she's like, whatever, I'm a pirate, let's go. Being a female in his quarters, let's put two and two together, she's eventually going to get pregnant. You cannot have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's going to figure out that she's not a guy. So he drops her off in Cuba. Go have the baby, come back later, we'll figure it out. So she has the baby, returns with no baby. We have no idea what happened to this kid. She's also dressed like a girl. She doesn't give a damn anymore about hiding her gender. So, this makes Jack pretty mad. Jack just captured another pirate crew, they're down below deck. Anne's gonna go flirting, because that's what Anne does. Guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack just captured. So now we have two females doing the exact same thing on the same ship. This young lady's name is Mary Reed. Now Mary, the two of them become friends, possibly lovers, we'll never know for sure. They become friends and they're obviously, they're on the ship together. So, the, the British find out where they are. They send their entire fleet to come take down one pirate ship. Anne and Mary are the only two not drunk enough to come up with their one bullet flintlocks to try to save the ship. They're obviously going to get taken. The British are arresting them and Anne looks at Jack, her captain and Bo, and says, you should have fought like a man instead of being hanged like a dog. So, now we have, they're captured and the new uh, Chief Justice in Jamaica, he wants to see the two men that fought back by themselves. He's already tried, hung Calico Jack and, and his men that were too drunk to come up and fight. So the two ladies go in front, they reveal their gender, hoping to save themselves, and he doesn't care that they're female. They're still pirates in his eyes. He's still gonna hang them. They scream out, we plead our bellies, meaning they're both claiming to be pregnant. You can 
You can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So he sends them both back to jail to delay the hanging. Dad is still here in Charleston with his Irish money. He bails out Anne, brings her back home. She remarries, husband number two, guy number four, because yes, we're going to count Mary, has four children and dies at the age of 84. That's all we know. I know, very abrupt ending. Again, I'm famous for that. As far as Mary Reed, she died a year later in 1721 in the Jamaican jail from whatever pirates die from in Jamaican jails. It's probably scurvy and bumpy and gross and whatever else you want to come up with. So, two questions I left out on purpose. The name of Anne Bonnie's parents, that's the father and the mistress, and the name of Calico Jack's ship. So, those are questions you can ask. Anything else is fair game. Ask whatever you want to. However, before we start spreading out and finding out what's going on here, I told you at the beginning of the story that people have passed out on my tours. This is one of those instances where it's actually relevant to the story. Back in September, I brought my group of eight or nine people back here, and the kid next to me to my right starts to pass out. I mean, he's white as a ghost and starts to drop like a wet noodle pick him up by his armpit and carry him over to that brick wall with his boyfriend and then I send the boyfriend over to go get him a bottle of water. He brings it back. He's feeling better. I then tell the story. They didn't know the story ahead of time. I send everybody out to play with their devices. All of a sudden they pull me aside and say, we have to tell you something. I'm like, what do you got? We are two transgender males, meaning I had two females dressed as males on my tour, just like Anne and Mary. And it now made sense to them on why one of them felt faint the minute we walked into the space. These are things I cannot make up. Again, my imagination is good, but it's not that good. <laughs> so, with that being said, that's why I give you guys that heated warning at the beginning. I will tell you that normally psychics and mediums, once they reveal themselves to me, they normally don't make it through the tour. The Pinkney Mansion site, they're on the ground, and there's a paramedic being called. It's almost, it's almost a guarantee. So, if I was a psychic or a medium on the tour, that's, that, that's what they do for a living and practice it, that you're getting static now. Um, that's usually where they, they don't make it through is the Pinkney Mansion site. But that one, they were the transgender males, can't make that stuff up. Um, those of you with cameras, so if you want to go to the front to get some footage up there, you can, which means you two would have to exit the lot and make a left. The only thing I ask is you don't interrupt other tours. That way you guys can actually see the front of the powder magazine. Um, the rest of us, we're going to probably hang out over here unless you want to go see the front of it with them, you can. Um, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Are you seeing any activity going on? Don't go near parking meters, remember. Any activity, Reese? No. Move. Yeah. Pipe on the pot. Reese. Are you doing anything?
what was the name of the ship during this time? What happened to the baby after she gave birth? Reese. Temperature change. Hmm? 18 degrees is 67. That was at 38. Cold spot right there, isn't it? Mm hmm. See, the camera's not working anymore. This camera is it? By the portage on. See, hmm? See if that guy gets anything right there. No. See, this camera's lights are out. Uh. Do you think that has to do with any activity? No, the cameras are just, the lights are just out. Uh. Battery's dead. I know sometimes happens on the shows, that's what I was asking. Where did he go? I don't know. Mm hmm. Three. Oh, wow. My thing is flashing. Yeah, you're doing it. I Stop. Tried, I tried Don't reach. Let it do Shut. it. You're ruining this for everybody.
Yeah, there's someone marking up there. Yeah, you can see their hand moving. Watch. They're taking a shower dive. I didn't know it's that light on when I first got here. Did you? Well, I did just see a hand right there. But there's a shower curtain. See, there's another hand. Hold on. Summer. Yeah, they're taking Summer. a shower. She's in tune. What do you got? So I've got a new four. Um, and then I've got It's 11 o'clock. I should be a fish one. Mm -hmm. He's messing up the thing. I know he is. Not much, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Stamps and controversy challenge. Yeah. The challenge and competition and that kind of thing also shows up around Dueler's Alley. We're still only half a block away. Okay. So, depending on what else shows up with that, that's usually the first indicator that something else is going to come up around Dueler's Alley. Okay. Okay. So. I think we need to all pull back to the wall so we can get this party wrapped up. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to give Kelly a minute. She, just, I mean, she and I were talking. There's something I think that you guys to share with you guys about some of that. Yeah, Mark's just standing there. Mom. Mom. All right. Now let's go ahead and cut yours off. Okay. You can stop yours too, Ms. Riley. Um, I want to point out the city and name thing that we just talked about. I won't go any further than that if you're okay with that.